Hello everybody, this is Kiran and today we are going to talk about test estimation and test planning. This is uh, another important phase of STLC because planning is very uh, mandatory and important before we actually start working on any software. So we have to learn about what do we uh, write in a test plan and also how do we estimate and plan. So if you are uh, working as a senior QA or QA lead, you have to very uh, importantly understand the mindset behind actually trying to estimate. Let's begin. So before you actually begin to perform activities like software or test case writing or test case execution, you have to first estimate the efforts and plan the entire uh, workflow model you have chosen. So the estimation depends on various factors. They are time and costing. So the costing in terms of resources, in terms of software and the efforts needed. Here we go. These are the pointers or maybe uh, the criteria for estimation. The resources which we have in our team, the time which we have and how much time we would need, the human skills which we have, the technologies we have and the costing. Now, how do we estimate? What is the thought process or what is the idea behind actually estimating? So first, a uh, very important uh, fundamental of doing any estimation is work breakdown structure. So we'll learn about what bre work breakdown actually mean and how it is useful. Our second point is three point estimation and final is functional point estimation. So let's see each one of them. So we divide the whole projects into modules. So let's say there's a big project like Amazon. And if you're working on Amazon, we have to understand that we have to divide the entire Amazon flow into different sections. If I try to make you understand this using, so this is Amazon project. So in Amazon, there are so many different sections. So one is e-commerce flow, of course. The second is seller integration panel. Third is customer support panel. Fourth is order management panel. So these are all different modules which needs to be worked upon for creating any marketplace panel like Amazon. So this is just an example. Let's take up one of the modules which will be further subdivided into sub modules. So let's say we take up e-commerce platform and in the e-commerce we know that there are so many different pages we have to develop. So first is like registration of the user. Second is like login. Third is cart. Fourth is you uh, product listing pages of different categories. Then there is product description page of one product. Then there is order page where you order action. And then there is thank you page. And then there is tracking pages further. So, so many different pages for developing one e-commerce flow. So, these are sub modules. And then a person can break one module, sub module also into functionalities and start working on it. So let's say somebody is working on the payment or order page. So in that there are different payment gateways. One is credit card, debit card. One is net banking. So different functionalities, right? One is wallet. So these different functionalities can be divided amongst the teammates and they can start working on it. So work breakdown structure is a very, very useful method of starting to estimate any uh, project. So once we know that, okay, this particular functionality, which is here, will need around five hours of work. So the estimation is five hours. This will need two hours. This will need three hours. So to complete one sub module, which is this, we will need five plus two plus two, which is nine hours of work. So we'll need, okay, we need nine hours of work. And we can also estimate the date by which it can be delivered. We will also need to know how many resources we need to implement or we need to assign to that particular uh, functionality. And then we will also understand if we have enough technologies to work on that particular module. If we don't, we need to either hire technology, hire that skill or maybe develop that skill. So all these estimation is very important in the beginning. So now this is like sub module is completed. Now, similarly, if we know all the sub modules measurement of how much time we would need, we can also decide one modules total effort. So this plus this plus this, whatever it comes out to be, let's say 100 hours. So this will take total 100 hours. Similarly, if we combine everything, let's say 500 hours. So we can imagine, okay, in 500 hours, we'll be able to deliver this particular 
project. So that's an example of how we use work breakdown structure to estimate and plan. Moving forward, okay, these things, uh, you know, the same work breakdown structure has been explained properly. You know, we have to analyze the software, of course. This is about the SCLC again. Then you have to create test specifications. That is, uh, you have to know the plan, test plan. Then you have to actually write the test cases and then actually create de uh, defects. So that's the work breakdown into five smaller tasks. Tasks and subtasks. Uh, you know, if we have one task, then we can create multiple subtasks related to that one task. Step two about, is about in the work breakdown structure. You have to allocate each task to one team member or multiple tasks to one team member. Now, allocate each task to team team members. Then estimate the efforts of the task. Then you have to ask the team members to estimate how much time they need. And then you have to verify, review those estimations that they have estimated is correct or not. Have they taken more time than required or have they taken less time than it should take? So estimate the efforts and uh, we'll use functional point and three point uh, estimation for that functional point. So functional point is a method in which you estimate based on three different uh, entities. One is size, duration and cost. So whenever you do any estimation based on size and then the duration of the project and then the costing, this is called functional point estimations. Similarly, we have something called three point estimations. So you can make uh, estimation uh, based on the best case estimations. Like you have to, there are, whenever you're filling in any estimation sheet, there are three different columns, best case, mean, most likely estimation and worst case. So in the best case, you have to tell them that how, what is the minimum time you would, you think that you need to complete this particular task. Let's say you think in two hours I can do, but most likely you might take three hours. But in the worst case, if you get stuck in some piece of the code, you can also tell them that the worst case scenario, I may need five hours as well. So these are the, you know, uh, three uh, point estimations you have to do so that there is an average of the efforts we can, can be calculated. Because if somebody is saying that, okay, the only the best case estim estimations have be, has been done amongst the teammates, so it might be a wrong uh, calculation of the efforts and uh, the team can be uh, in a wrong impression that the work will be finished earlier, but most likely they might need more time. So that's what uh, is a three point estimation technique. Now we have to know and understand what is a test plan. Now, test plan is a document which is very, very important, which is very, uh, which is a mandatory step in a step in all the uh, softwares so that the planning is well circulated and understood amongst all the teammates in the company or the project and everybody is uh, adhering to all the rules being mentioned in the plan only then we can reach to the successful delivery of the project so that's our test plan a test plan is a document which will contain many different uh, sections uh, involving the scope of testing people who are going to do the testing their roles the technology is being used, how long it is going to take, what are the bottlenecks, if uh, something is not, which is out of testing, then why? And uh, then what are the deliverables, what will be delivered as a part of this whole testing cycle? So test plan, let's understand, you have to first analyze the product, very important because until you know what the product is all about or what is its business model, it's uh, not going to work out and you cannot uh, understand how to proceed. So analyzing the product, very important, deciding strategies. So let's go and understand each topic. So analyzing who all will be using the software, what it is used for, how will it work? So what is the business flow? What is the model? which all software or hardware products will be using. Let's say you have created something for your uh, car dash. So which all hardware will be using your software? Okay, strategies, very important. So for developing strategies, you have to know the scope. Let's say your project doesn't have scope for performance testing or security testing. You have to mention it clearly in the test plan that no, we are not going to do any security testing as a part of this test plan. So scope of testing is very important. Identifying testing type, which all testing methods you'll be using, you have to mention properly. You have to mention the risks as well, that if you're not doing security testing, this might have the security risks can be involved. And the logistics, like how will we proceed with the testing? 
everything should be mentioned as a part of the strategy objective of testing that why we are doing this type of testing and what we will get so mostly it will be a quality outcome with no bugs in the system criteria like what is the acceptance criteria and what is the exit criteria these two are very important term uh, acceptance criteria is given or provided by the business analyst team they provide us that when can we say that yes the testing uh, if all these uh, particular criteria are met then the testing can be started acceptance criteria and exit criteria are the criteria when we can say that yes we can exit the testing it's done everything is working fine so acceptance and exit criteria resource planning who will do what who will act as a team lead who will be acting as a manual tester who will do the automation resource planning is very important plan test environment where all we are going to do the testing so if suppose as i said if it is a car dashboard software we have to get a simulated environment for doing that testing or if it's a mobile application so we have to have proper uh, devices or browser stack accounts for doing the mobile testing so planning test environment is important scheduling and estimation of course very important because we have to know the dates and the schedule based on which the testing will be done when will it be delivered when will be the first bill be delivered when will the test cases be delivered when will the automation suite be delivered everything is planned and decided in estimation uh, and schedules test delivered what will be delivered what all documentation will be delivered it can be a test case sheet it can be an automation suite it can be test reports so all the plan has done and that's about how we create a test plan sheet thank you